As everyone knows, the big driver, I would say, for user interaction with the smartphone has always been increasing the size of the phone, but also eliminating the edges yeah. of the display. You yeah. want everybody wants bezel-less display, right? The, yeah. where, the, where there's there's no dark areas around the edges. You're just staring at a, a pure screen almost. Well, the electrode architecture for that is actually quite interesting because you have to be able to connect from the back side of the phone to the front side of the phone where the display interacts with the user in, in some ways. So there's a lot of electrode architectures that go into that. Mm -hmm. So our materials play a fundamental role there as far as those electrode architectures. So it's all about material specs for me as a material science, but those ultimately relate in a larger scale to electrical engineering design slash device design on the designer front. And then we work with the OEMs or their contract manufacturers and then integrate those into packages that ultimately the consumer sees or in DOD applications as well, uh, things along those lines. I have a question about bevel edges for mobile mobile phones. Yeah. How challenging are those from as as someone who is in the forefront of seeing that being created and, and working with the, with the companies to do that? It, it is cha it's a challenging application because you obviously have interdigitated individual electrodes that have to go around the front to the back of the screen. Uh -huh. That's how those architectures are designed. In a traditional electronic technique, you may sputter down, just sputter down like just a blanket coating uh -huh. that's masked. So then you're actually removing down, you're removing like 90% of the metal at that point. It's a relatively inefficient use of the metal. Sputtering has to be done or PVD has to be done in a vacuum environment. It's challenging. It doesn't do three-dimensional structures very well. So you're, you're going to have to have sort of an, a multiple axes rotation thing set up inside of the chamber itself to actually place these materials. Okay. In general, it's a, a multi-step process and very challenging. With, with additive, which our materials come into play, we can match or beat PVD or sputtered materials uh, as far as perf just materials performance is concerned. But then we can use alternative techniques like screen printing or aerosol jet printing to just put down the metal where it needs to go versus flood coating the metal over an entire edge of a, a bezel, for mm -hmm. example, of a display, and then etching away most of it. That's that's a really cumbersome and, and wasteful process with yeah. a large waste stream associated with it. I'm not saying additive is waste-free. There's no such thing as waste-free manufacturing. It doesn't exist. Yeah. However, there are certainly far more efficient ways of doing things than vacuum-based deposition techniques for, for a lot of things you see. Vacuum is needed a lot in on the front end of semiconductor just due to the sensitivity of the materials that are being used. But on the back end side slash on the integration side, with a modern materials palette, I believe a lot of these vacuum techniques are are reaching obsolescence just due to more need for sustainability in the manufacturing, as well as just, just less waste and less uh, logistical headaches associated with production. Those are always going to be a growing concern, mm. and vacuum-based techniques always have limitations associated with that.